Is there scientific proof of yoga's effectiveness? For the answer, stay tuned. We live in a world where many people expect scientific proof of a treatment before they want to try it. And this is certainly in the attitude of many physicians when it comes to prescribing something like yoga. Uh, they want to see scientific support, scientific studies that validate the modality's effectiveness. And in fact, the amount of research on yoga has been exploding uh, for the last 10 years and even longer. Uh, growing at an ever-increasing rate. Uh, it's to the point now where there are um, many, many randomized controlled trials, which are considered the gold standard in evidence-based medicine. Uh, there are also now a number of meta-analyses that combine the results of scientific studies. Now, unfortunately, it's hard for something like yoga which doesn't have an industry to support research, to garner the amount of proof and studies of sufficient size and duration that they end up being persuasive to physicians and skeptical scientists because there's no industry to fund them. For something like drugs, you've got pharmaceutical companies that pay the overwhelming majority of costs for research for their products. There is no industry for yoga that can support uh, yoga research that way. And there's another problem <laughs> that has to do with the fact that yoga, which isn't really designed to treat health conditions per se, we treat individuals, even in yoga therapy. We may target things, to try to help people deal with cancer or low back pain or insomnia or depression or any of the many other conditions that yoga can be helpful for. But we're actually treating the individual, not the condition. We look at things holistically. That means body, mind, spirit, environment, anything that can affect health and well-being and we look for imbalances. We might find someone has a structural imbalance. Their posture is poor. Uh, they're hunching their back. Their lower ribs push into their diaphragm. They can't get a full breath. That tends to shunt the, uh, the, the air to the upper part of the lungs, which is more stimulating to the sympathetic nervous system. It acts like a stressor, in other words, and that can harm all kinds of medical conditions. So when we spot things like poor posture or poor breathing, we target those things and try to bring the imbalance back toward balance. And that process ends up helping many medical conditions, many health conditions. Now the problem is because yoga can help so many conditions and because Western medicine tends to think about diagnoses and they want proof that yoga is effective for every single diagnosis. And of course, there are hundreds and even thousands of diagnoses. Um, there are more than 100 types of cancer. So in order to meet the standards of evidence-based medicine, yoga is asked to provide persuasive evidence in each of the different categories that it might be effective for. Whereas a drug like Lipitor, a statin drug used to lower cholesterol, is used in a very narrow range of conditions. And so the drug company doesn't need to do studies on hundreds of different conditions. Now, in fact, for years, I have been collecting a bibliography of yoga research. All the studies that in one way or another have found that yoga helps various conditions. And I've published this every few years, uh, ever since the uh, an early list appeared in my 2007 book, Yoga is Medicine. That, in that book, there were 43 conditions that I listed 
that for which there was at that time some scientific evidence of effectiveness. Now I've updated that list and the number has grown and grown and grown. When I last did the list in late 2016, it was up to 101 conditions that yoga uh, potentially helps. Now in mid 2019, when I just did it again, it had grown to 117 conditions. Not all of these studies are of the highest methodology and in evidence-based medicine, they only want to see rigorous, well-controlled studies. But again, it's hard for yoga to get those uh, because of the lack of money. And, and because, again, there are just so many conditions it's useful for spreading that small amount of money over a huge number of conditions sets almost an impossible goal for yoga to meet. Nonetheless, more and more research is coming in. That 117 conditions helped by yoga, by the way, is available for free on my website as a PDF. That PDF has hyperlinks, which will take you directly to the study abstract, and in the cases where they're available, to the free full text articles, so that you can decide for yourself what you make of the study. Um, now, my belief is that when something is safe, like yoga, we shouldn't demand the same level of research that we would expect a pharmaceutical to have. Because we know that pharmaceuticals, even when prescribed correctly, are among the leading causes of death. Tens and probably hundreds of thousands of people are dying due to drug side effects. Now, as far as we know, there's never been a single death caused by yoga therapy. Because yoga therapy is ideally tailored to the individual, that means that someone is not going to be given something that's inappropriate for them. Because certainly if you've got a serious medical condition, you don't want to just walk into a random yoga class at your gym or at a yoga studio, because you may be getting something that's far more strenuous than what you need or which contains certain practices that are not good for you. So if you've got diabetes and you've got uh, some retinal bleeding uh, in the past, you probably don't want to do headstand and other inverted poses. For example, there's so much research in fact that it allowed me and three of my colleagues Sapir Khalsa of Harvard Medical School, Shirley Tellis, uh, most prolific yoga researcher in the world, uh, based in India, and Lorenzo Cohen of the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, to edit, and we all also contributed to, the first professional level medical textbook on yoga therapy called The Principles and Practice. Of yoga and healthcare. So all these indications are showing us that the amount of research supporting yoga is getting better all the time. Uh, the methodology of that research is improving, but it's still not up to the standard that many physicians will demand. And in fact, it's unlikely, for the reasons I've mentioned, to meet those standards anytime soon. Now some more enlightened physicians are already recommending yoga to their patients, as do many holistic healers, uh, nurses, physical therapists, and other healthcare professionals. Um, but really, it may be something that you'll need to pursue on your own. However you do it, a little bit every day is the key. Okay. All for today. Thanks much.